It's time for America Outdoors Radio, the show that covers the outdoor scene across the U.S. of A. and the entire continent. Fishing, hunting, conservation, outdoor recreation, and great destinations, we cover it all every week. It's your country, your outdoors. Let's explore it together with your host, John Cruz. ICAST, that big fishing trade show put on every year by the American Sport Fishing Association in Orlando, it's over. And as always, a ton of new products were introduced by different manufacturers in the greater fishing industry. Every company was hoping their new item was going to garner a prestigious Best of Category Award. And if you're wondering who some of the winners are, I can tell you that the Electronics Best of winner was Hummingbird with their Hummingbird Mega Live Imaging Sonar. In terms of fishing line, the best new product came from Seaguar with their Basics Fishing Line. The best saltwater rod from a company you might not have heard of before, Bull Bay Tackle Company with their Banshee Rod. And the best of category when it comes to terminal tackle, that was Shark Bands Fishing with the Zeppelin, billed as the world's First shark deterrent tackle. The big winner, though, winning both the best freshwater soft bait and the best product award out of the 30 product categories. The best of the show, that belongs to the Berkeley Power Bait Gilly, a soft plastic bait infused with Power Bait scent that looks just like a bluegill and definitely stole the show. Speaking of the show, this one in particular... Kurt Arakawa with Daiwa USA will be joining us later in the program to tell you about the Zillion SVTW bait casting reel that won the best freshwater reel award at ICAST and the saltest MQ spinning reel recognized at ICAST as the best saltwater reel. These reels, they ain't cheap, but they are very incredible and I think you'll understand why they won when you hear more about them. Sticking with fishing, we've got one more interview to share with you that we recorded at the Bassmaster Classic Outdoors Expo last month in Fort Worth, Texas. We'll be talking to Cody Robertson, the founder of Army Bass Anglers. Now, you don't have to be in the Army to be a part of this group, but it does help. And in addition to fishing bass tournaments, Army Bass Anglers are doing some pretty amazing things out there. Switching from fishing to hunting, if you've ever wanted to hunt big game in Wyoming, you want to hear our conversation today with Sarah Dorenzo. She's with Wyoming Game and Fish. When it comes to big game hunting in this state, you'll need a tag. And as you'll find out, there's lots of different ones available and some tag options are better than others. Before we talk any more about ICAST winners, though, let's share some great news about a big conservation success story brought to you by a California conservationist named Rich Padula and the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. Next up on America Outdoors Radio, we've got very good news on the conservation front out of Northern California, where some 12,000 acres of Eel River Peninsula's Thule Elk Habitat is now protected and open to public access. With us here to tell you more about it is Jennifer Doherty with the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. We're excited about this. As you should be. That is a lot of acreage. Why don't you tell our listeners exactly where the Eel River Peninsula is and why this area is so critical for elk? You bet. So Eel River Peninsula, the Eel River runs through northern California. So we're northwest of Sacramento, about maybe 90, 100 miles in near a small town of Willett. And the property that we're going to talk about was privately owned, and this landowner has wanted to turn it into public lands. So the, the property is within the Mendocino National Forest, and that happens to be the Thule Elk's northern geographic range. So Thule Elk are subspecies of elk, and they are the smallest in population of the subspecies of elk, and this is their northern range. So it's a critical landscape for this elk population. Let's talk a little bit about how this came to be. I understand a large part of it was a landowner, Rich Padula. How much land did he own and sell to the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation or other partners? Yeah, so in this particular case, this property was almost 12,000 acres. And in his mind, he wants, you know, he's very conservation minded. I can't speak highly enough of the gentleman. He has a tremendous conservation ethic. 
wants this property to be in the right ownership long term for the public to access, but also for the, the wildlife. And he stuck with us. He was patient with us and with the Forest Service and worked to transfer this property into Forest Service ownership. So the Elk Foundation, the Trust for Public Land, and the U.S. Forest Service purchased the property from Mr. Padula, the private landowner, through land and water conservation funds, as well as other conservation funding. And we had to do it in a few phases because this is not a small landscape. But we did just complete the last phase of it, and the property is now in Mendocino National Forest ownership, smack dab right in the middle of the Sanhedrin and the Yuki Wilderness areas. Oh, this is wonderful news. So this area is open for public access now. I'm guessing it was not before. So does that mean there's hunting to be had here, fishing to be had here, hiking and wildlife watching too? Absolutely. Yeah, that's one of the beautiful things about this landscape is that it has recreational opportunities for the vast majority of us out there. So if you like to fish small streams, you like to hunt, you like to bird watch, just get out there in nature and enjoy the landscape. This place definitely has a lot of opportunities. I know the National Forest System, the Forest Service was very excited to take ownership of the property because not only does the property itself offer quite a bit of opportunity for wildlife watching and recreation, creating, but it also happens to be a key link to get into some more backcountry access into those wilderness areas or the vast reaches of the national forest. So really expanding what the public can do in the area and and allowing us to spread out a little bit more, which will be beneficial for the wildlife as well. Well, like I said, absolutely wonderful news. And and I've got to ask, most conservation organizations have been pretty quiet during the COVID pandemic, in large part because they have a lack of funds to do a lot of the habitat work that they like to do. But the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, you just keep plugging along and doing great things. It hasn't slowed down at all during the pandemic. And you haven't had the banquets you normally have. So how's the organization managing this? Yeah, great question. COVID is, it has been difficult for many organizations, right? Not being able to gather, or do the fundraising events we need to. We are so grateful for our longtime volunteers and donors that have stuck with us throughout the last year and a half. Can't say thank you enough to them. And, you know, the land and conservation and access work and habitat work, that doesn't happen overnight. So these things are in the works for many years and they're coming to fruition during this period of time. And we're able to to put our resources into it and, and keep the good conservation work going. I think at all times right now, it's critical. We all appreciate being outside, spreading out a little bit, enjoying what we love to do, our traditional sort of recreating. And I think that this is the work that's really important to our members and to our organization and our mission. So we're not going to slow down at all. If anything, we've you know put the gas down a little bit harder on the pedal, and we're excited to get some more work done. The Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, folks, uh, definitely an organization you ought to get behind. They're not only helping elk, they're helping all sorts of wildlife, and they're opening up access for you as a hunter and angler and outdoors enthusiast, too, not just in Northern California, but all over the United States. If you want to find out more about the work they're doing and to join this great organization doesn't cost much to do so at all just go to rmef.org that's rmef.org for the rocky mountain elk foundation and look for a banquet near you they're starting to go off again and go to one you're gonna have a great time you're gonna be supporting the work that this organization does jennifer thanks so much for sharing this with us today on america outdoors radio thank you so much telling you about Sportsman's Cove Lodge in Southeast Alaska for a while now, and there's a reason. They are the only Alaska Lodge we talk about on this show. It's because they're truly Alaska's best lodge. The adventure starts with a float plane ride from Ketchikan, after which you'll get the chance to experience some of the best hospitality, food, and wonderful people you'll ever meet. Wildlife is abundant, from bears and deer to eagles and whales, and let's not forget the reason you're here, the fishing, halibut, salmon, 
Link God, Rockfish, True Cod, and more. It's all waiting for you in abundance at Sportsman's Cove Lodge. Book your trip today at alaskasbestlodge.com. That's alaskasbestlodge.com for Sportsman's Cove Lodge. Hunting and fishing are exercises in hope. Before you head into the woods, you hope to tag out on a deer you'll have to field dress. Before you make that first cast, you hope for a big fish to clean and fillet. When your hopes are realized, you'll need a sharp knife. Whether you sharpen that blade on a power sharpener in the shop or a manual sharpener in the field, WorkSharp has the tool for you. Look for WorkSharp products in sporting and stores near you or online at WorkSharpTools.com. Backcountry Hunters and Anglers is the voice for your public lands, waters, and wildlife. From the Canadian Yukon to the Florida Everglades, we're stepping up to conserve North America's public lands, defend our hunting and fishing traditions, and expand public access to the outdoors. Our outdoor heritage depends on sportsmen and women like you speaking up for the natural resources that sustain our way of life. Find out how you can get involved at backcountryhunters.org and become a BHA member today. The Dalton in Oregon is your base camp for fishing fun. Reel in big salmon, tangle with steelhead, bass, and walleye, or wrestle a monster sturgeon to the boat. After the day is done, you'll find a variety of lodging options around town. Need to resupply? We've got you covered with sporting goods stores plus great dining, breweries, wineries, and can't-miss attractions like the Gorge Discovery Center. Plan your fishing getaway today at explorethedals.com. That's explorethedals.com. Hunting is conservation. At the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, we salute hunters for providing the majority of conservation funding across the U.S. Join us for our annual fundraising banquet to benefit wildlife in the mission of the RMEF. You're back in with America Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz. We've got Sarah Dorenzo on the line. She's the public information officer for Wyoming Game and Fish. And the topic today is the Super Tag raffle that just raised $1.4 million for conservation this year. And this raffle is a really big deal, as Sarah is about to tell you. Sarah, great to have you back on the air. Thanks for having me. So why don't you explain exactly what the Super Tag Raffle is and why hunters are so keen to participate every year and how they can do so next year? Sure. So the Wyoming Super Tag is an opportunity for resident and non-resident hunters alike to have a chance to hunt some of Wyoming's premier big game and trophy species. This is another draw, essentially, separate from all the other licensed draws that we have, and it's run on a raffle. And so the odds are up to you, essentially. The more tickets you buy, the more chances there are to win. And these are for some of the most sought-after species in Wyoming. Some of these are once in a lifetime draws in the in the regular draw, but if you have a super tag, you can draw more than once, and it kind of you know gets you access to some hunts that would otherwise be extremely difficult to draw. The things I'm talking about include bighorn sheep, cyrus moose, Rocky Mountain elk, mountain goat, mule deer, or white-tailed deer, bison, pronghorn, mountain lion, gray wolf, and black bear. And with the super tag, there's drawing for each of those species, and then there's also something called the super tag trifecta where one incredibly lucky hunter gets to choose three of those species that they'd like to hunt if they draw the trifecta. Wow. So you're basically buying a raffle ticket per species, except for the trifecta ticket there. How much does it cost for each raffle ticket? So the individual species tickets are $10 a piece. The trifecta tickets are $30 a piece. So you raised $1.4 million. That tells me a whole lot of hunters entered the raffle this year. Yes, a lot of tickets were sold. We had, to be exact, 111,606 tickets sold over the last year. And this money, it's a win-win for hunters and wildlife. Essentially, we offer a great opportunity for hunters who want to pursue some of these amazing species on the ground. All the while, the money that's raised from the super tag goes back onto projects that help wildlife. And those are things that people in Wyoming and outside of the state really care about, like Uh, mule deer, uh, chronic wasting disease, and preventing collisions with wildlife on the road. 
Well, that is great to hear. So you're right, it is a win-win because even if you don't get that coveted tag, you're giving money that's going to go towards conserving wildlife and providing habitat for them and more. So that's fantastic. Next year, when do folks get to apply for a chance to get a super tag? So if you're already feeling a little bit jealous that you didn't enter this year, the, the good news is is that ticket sales are open now. It's a whole year. You can buy tickets. And what we've been doing the last couple years is um, running a few monthly raffles throughout the year. So not only do you get a chance at winning a super tag, depending on when you buy your ticket, you might get a chance at more great prizes throughout the year. Some of the things we did with the generous support of our sponsors were able to offer, you know, custom boots or a custom custom rifle along the way. So there's lots of chances to win with Super Tag, not just with licenses, but with gear and and some top-notch support for your hunt. I love this program. All right, let's turn from the Super Tag raffle to just buying a tag to hunt big game in Wyoming. I mean, this is a big dream for a lot of folks, especially our listeners, you know, back east and in Tennessee and Pennsylvania and Ohio, who probably just love the idea of heading to Wyoming and and hunting these animals in the West. So when it comes to getting a tag for certain game animals, let's talk mule deer, let's talk elk, let's talk antelope. What does the regular application period look like and how does that work? Sure. So there is a regular application period that is dependent on species. So typically the application period for Resident and non-resident deer and antelope runs January 1st through May 31st. For non-resident elk, it runs just the month of January, the 1st through the 31st. For residents, that is January 1st through May 31st for elk as well. So it's a big application period, lots of time to sort of explore, make your choices, and also see what the season proposals are before you submit your application to hunt. What about antelope? Same situation there? Antelope, yep. For residents and non-residents, it's January 1st through May 31st. All right. So after May 31st in June, you're going to find out whether you get drawn or not. But if you didn't, there's something called leftover licenses. Why don't you explain what that draw looks like? Sure. So any licenses that weren't allocated through the regular draw are made available through a random draw called the leftover draw. Residents and non-residents alike can apply for it, and it occurs after you get your draw results from the regular draw. Um, We post a list up of the available licenses, and everyone goes into a random draw to see how those are allocated. That's already been done. That happened at the the end of June, so there is something called the, what I call the leftover leftovers, (laughs) and um, with the leftover leftovers, that is what's left over after that draw. It's extremely limited, and it's often either difficult to access areas or private land only hunting. And so we do have a few of those licenses left at the end of those two draws, and those can be bought over, over the counter or just straight out online for folks. All right. So the idea of just going to Wyoming, walking into a sporting goods store mm-hmm. in September, October, you know, saying, I want to buy a tag for antelope or deer or elk, that's kind of a pipe dream, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The best way to really assure yourself that you're going to be able to have your best shot at a license that's desirable to you and an area that you want to pursue the, the type and species you want is to apply in that regular draw. All right. So the bottom line is this, folks. Wyoming is a premier place to hunt big game in the United States. I think all of us know that. But as you've just heard from Sarah, you have to plan ahead if you're going to want to do it. Three different application periods to do so. Obviously, the the general one is the one where you're going to get your best shot, then the leftover licenses, and then, as Sarah says, the leftovers of the leftovers, which are uh, (laughs) what's left in hard-to-access land. But you've got a great tool on your website, your hunt planner, that really helps prospective hunters figure out where to apply, what harvest data looks like, and more, don't you? We do. It's called the Wyoming Hunt Planner, and it's pretty much top-of-the-line hunt planning tool. It shows, you know, you can select your species that you're going to hunt. You can research each hunt area, the drawing odds, the licenses available, the season dates, information about the land and access 
plotted on there are hunter management areas, our wildlife management areas, our walk-in hunting areas. So it's very comprehensive when it comes to hunt planning. It's the next best thing that you can have, aside from just getting boots on the ground and seeing it for yourself. Oh, I've certainly uh, played around on that site, and folks, it, it really is as advertised. It is a great planning tool. So go to the Wyoming Game and Fish website, check out the Hunt Planner, start planning your 2022 hunt now. As you just heard, it's not early start planning, and you can buy those Super Tag raffle tickets now, too. Sarah, thanks as always for sharing this great information with us this time on America Outdoors Radio. Thank you. This portion of the show was brought to you by our friends at WorkSharp. They're the fine folks out of Ashland, Oregon, who make knife and tool sharpeners that you can use, whether you're hunting or fishing or camping or maybe in your shop, maybe in your kitchen for all of the knives and tools you need sharpened every day when you work and play. WorkSharp tools can be found online at WorkSharpTools.com or you can find them in sporting goods stores and hardware stores all over our great nation. Just look for WorkSharp products to sharpen your knives and your tools because nothing is worse than trying to get the job done right with a dull blade. Why book at Sportsman's Cove Lodge? Why is Alaska like no other place on earth? It hasn't changed in thousands of years. From the way you get here on a float plane to the way you go out with the guides and the boats, it's just a professional experience. And I said, this is as good as it gets. I said, if you can't catch fish here, you can't catch fish anywhere. Your experience with us will leave you speechless. Book now at alaskasbestlodge.com. back in with America Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz. We are broadcasting from the Bassmaster Classics Outdoor Expo at Fort Worth, Texas. All sorts of vendors and exhibitors here. And one of them is Army Bass Anglers. Caught my eye as an Army veteran. Had to wander over and I got to meet the CEO, Cody Robertson, who is with us now. Cody, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. We're at the Bassmaster Classic. What a great place to be this weekend. It is indeed a great place to be. I am having a blast. Now, I see folks with Army Bass Angler jerseys fishing a lot of tournaments, not just all over America, but in the Northwest where I live too. Why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about this organization that you founded? So, founded it back in 2005, fishing tournament trails myself. It was a, I'll kind of shorten the version for you. A nonprofit asked me if I could help them. That led to returning heroes home. And then from there, as I helped them raise their $4.5 billion they needed for their facility, more service members wanted to help me do what I was doing to help them. And hold that- on, hold on, hold on. So <laughs> let's back off here. What is returning heroes home, and how does you tournament fishing help them? Okay, so returning heroes home is a facility at Fort Sam Houston, Texas. Service members that are wounded in combat, specifically those that have burn injuries, come to Brook Army Medical Center, which is the premier burn facility. There, while they're going through care, they stay at that facility right there so that people can't see them. A lot of times the injuries are so graphic, people can't comprehend what they're going through, and they don't want to be out in the public. And that facility allows them time to interact with their family, go through care, have a private place to hang out. Well, that facility was too small for the number of casualties coming in from Iraq and Afghanistan. It had to be expanded. We helped them raise the $4.5 million to raise that through the fishing industry. So the more I fished and we wrapped our boat in returning heroes home, people wanted to know what is that about. 
From there, we were able to raise the money by educating them, and they would donate. Then more service members saw what we were doing and wanted to participate. How can I help? How can I get involved? And that's how the evolution of Army Bass Anglers essentially started was service members helping service members, and then we had to figure out how to get our arms around this animal, and we created Army Bass Anglers, and then it launched its website, and then it launched its social media. And fast forward years down the road, Now you've got two national television shows, service members helping service members, competing for national championships both in fishing and in hunting, and using those platforms, national television, national social media, to raise not just thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars for those nonprofits that needed help. Because once we helped them, more nonprofits started knocking on my door. How can you help us? How can you help We literally had to answer that call. It went from one nonprofit to five nonprofits. It went from a couple of thousand dollars to now we've donated over $37 million helping veterans and veterans helping other veterans through Army Bass Anglers. So help me out here. Now, first off, this is open to folks who are either active military or separated military. And you don't have to be in the Army. You can be in any of the branches of the military. Is that correct? You can be in any branch of service. As long as you honorably serve, you can be in the coalition, which is a a tier or a level within the organization. If you're a patriot and you're just a straight up, you know, good hearted, all American, then you can join the task force and you can participate that way. So we've got something for everybody that loves America and loves our soldiers to participate in. Let's say I want to join Army Bass Anglers and I want to help. So I'm going to give you some money to join (laughs) Army Bass Anglers, I presume. And I presume that money is going to these nonprofits, or at least a good chunk of it is. How else am I helping get money to these nonprofits? So it's real simple. You join, those funds go to help underwrite their national television commercials. Anybody that knows anything about Super Bowl commercial spots or any major television show, A, they're not free, and B, they cost a lot of money. So we underwrite that for them, and they utilize that to raise even more dollars for the nonprofit to meet their missions. And then what can a service member do once they've joined? From there, they can volunteer at the events we put on across the country, i.e. the Bassmaster Classic, Skeeter's Owners Tournament, Ducks Unlimited International Expo, Texas Trophy Hunters. We work with all the major expo vendors to allow us to come in and do a fundraising operation that helps them even more. Nonprofits would have to pay exponential amount of dollars to be at these venues. We just saved them the money, and we just underwrote a national commercial, and we just got them the exposure of their nonprofit that they needed for a fraction of the cost to help them do what they need to do. And in the end, you got veterans helping veterans helping veterans. Here at this booth, for example, you are selling jerseys, you're selling t-shirts, you're selling hats, but you're selling a lot of other stuff that isn't necessarily Army Bass Angler related. Is this all stuff that's either donated or given to you at cost and then the profits go to these nonprofits? So each one's different, their contracts are different, but they are partners to the organization. They help us either A, by providing the product, B, we buy the product at a discount and we sell it and it underwrites the stuff and that's how we do it. So let's clear up a misnomer that I had about Army Bass Anglers. I actually thought that Army Bass Anglers was its very own tournament circuit. That's not true. That is not true. We partner with major tournament trails to get our members into their tournament trail, either through a discount or some kind of relationship that works for service members. They don't have the luxury of being able to fish all the time like everybody else because of deployments, op-tempo, Etc. So we work with those tournament trails to provide a better opportunity for them when they can go to fishing tournament trails. Now, we do operate one tournament trail online through tourneyx.com called Army Bass Anglers, and it allows service members 30 days to fish, upload their fish, and then we declare winners, and they get the opportunity to compete at a different level. Not everybody in the service is either stationed next to a major lake or an opportunity like that. And then you throw in out tempo and you throw in deployment and you throw in recovery, recouping from a deployment. You got a lot of factors that most service members, they deal with on a daily basis, but most civilians don't know the operational tempo of a service member, especially a country that's been at war for the better part of what now coming on 17 years. Absolutely. Seems like it never ends. So thank God you're doing what you're doing. Another question when it comes to this online tournament series, is it by length? Is it by weight? How do you determine a winner for these Tourney X tournaments? So the Tourney X tournaments are done by inches. You call five fish just like you would in a normal bass tournament. 
but it's not based off of weight. It's based off total length. So you add up the total number of inches over five fish, and that determines the winner. And what does the winner get? Oh uh, Well, in this particular case, our tournament trail is corporately sponsored by Bonafide Kayaks. We give away a SS-127, the largest kayak in the industry, every single month to the first place winner. And then from second place down, it's just a whole lot of great prizes from corporate partners, etc. So you're going to have a great time. You have a great opportunity to win a lot of really cool stuff at reasonable prices. And at the end of the day, those dollars are going to help military nonprofits that we've partnered with. And I guess I need to clarify one more thing. This Tourney X Tournament Series, it's open to active duty service members. It's open to veterans who are part of Army Bass Anglers. Is it also open to people who have not served, just patriots, as you say? Patriots. It's open to anybody that's a patriot. And we're not going to call you up and go, hey, are you a patriot? You know? (laughs) (laughs) We're just assuming you found us because that's how most people found us through either the Department of Defense or military defense contractors or service members or reservists. That's how they found us. So nine times out of ten, they are a patriot. And we do get civilians that have nothing to do with the military in there. We welcome them, too, because they're helping us achieve our mission. Absolutely. How much does it cost to join Army Bass Anglers, and what's the website to do so? So the cost to join Army Bass Anglers is forty two ninety nine a year. You're going to get that and then some when you get your packet in the mail. And then the tournament trail is $99 every month if you want to compete. That's extremely affordable if you look at tournament trail costs across the country. Yes, it is. And plus, this is really friendly, like you said, for anybody. Because especially on this Tourney X Trail, you can just fish by yourself at your own lake wherever you live. You don't have to fish against 60 other guys or 100 other guys or 200 other boats at a lake. Exactly. As long as it's public waters, you're eligible You can fish any water out there, as long as it's public waters. Tournament fishing anybody can do for a very good cause. It's offered through Army Bass Anglers. And no, you don't have to be in the Army to participate. However, Cody, I know you did serve in the Army for quite some time. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your continued service by being the founder and the man behind Army Bass Anglers. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys having me on the show. And you can find us at www.armybassanglers.com or just type in Army Bass Anglers on social media, and it'll take you right to us real easily. We love our children. We protect them. We guide them. We prepare them for life in the world. With all that we do, from deep in our hearts, we cannot control all things. Life-threatening illnesses and disabilities affect far too many of our children each year. While we cannot change the circumstance, we can make dreams come true. Dreams to provide hope, to provide spiritual healing and strength, to provide moments of happiness and relief in the hardest of times. We can give a glimmer of light and hope in a time of darkness and despair. Join HuntOfALifetime.org to help make dreams come true, to provide hope for children with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Hunt of a Lifetime is a nonprofit organization fulfilling dreams for hunting and fishing trips to youth 21 and under with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Visit HuntOfALifetime.org to learn how you can make a difference. Hey, how'd the meeting go with Tommy's school counselor today? Well... Not exactly as planned. I I think we need help. Help? Why do we need help? Well, I asked her about paying for college, and she said that's not something they do. Hmm. Maybe it is time to get some help. Even if Tommy just goes to state college, it's going to cost at least $25,000 a year. We'll have to rate our retirement and pay for Tommy's tuition. There's got to be a better way. There is a better way. A way where you can pay less for college or even receive college tuition free regardless of your income or your students' grades. A way for you to keep your hard-earned income and savings for your future and spend less on college while virtually eliminating the need for student loans. Get the facts about college admissions and tuition by going to tuitionprograms.org. That's tuitionprograms.org. Tuitionprograms.org. Get the facts about college admissions and tuition by going to tuitionprograms.org. Campers, adventure seekers, hunters, and foodies. No matter the lifestyle, we can all agree on one thing. Great food and great people are worth remembering. 
At Camp Chef, we don't just make grills. We create each product knowing that a warm meal is always better when it's shared with those we love. Learn more about Camp Chef grills, smokers, and portable cooking equipment at CampChef.com. That's CampChef.com for a better way to cook outdoors. Ready to step up to a quality-built rifle or shotgun that's a true classic? Check out Henry Repeating Arms, American-made. There's over 200 models to choose from in a variety of finishes and calibers for hunters and target shooters. Many of these are lever-action models with a look right out of the Old West. Don't be deceived, though. Henry Repeating Arms are modern, rugged, accurate, reliable, and have a lifetime guarantee. Find out more and order a free catalog today at HenryUSA.com. That's HenryUSA.com. Next on America Outdoors Radio, as promised, we're going to tell you about some of the products that won Best of Awards at ICAST, and two of them came from Daiwa USA with us here to tell you more about two reels that are really ones you've got to look at is Kurt Arakawa, the marketing manager for Daiwa USA. Kurt, welcome to the show and congratulations. Well, thank you very much. We're very happy. As you should be. This is no small feat. There's a lot of good rod and reel companies out there. To come out on top in both the freshwater and saltwater category is absolutely amazing. Let's start off with the reel that won the ICAST Best of Product Award in freshwater, the Zillion SVTW. It's a bait caster. Tell our listeners more about it. Okay, the Zillion Baitcaster is a new model for us. You know, it came out uh, roughly in January this year, and it's been super popular. We've had the Zillion name for a while, but it's really a redesigned product for us, and not just a few things. The whole thing was redesigned from the frame on up. It does have an aluminum frame, and it also has an aluminum side plate, which is where the gears are and the gear side where the handle is. And the reason why we do that on the higher expensive reels is if you have a frame made out of aluminum and the whole side of the reel, the gear side plate, it makes the reel a lot stronger and keeps all the gears in alignment properly for a longer period of time. So that part's very important. It has a new, we call it a hyperdrive design system, which is a little bit of a smaller teeth that mesh better and make the reel really smooth and stronger, very durable. We have a newly designed SV Boost, which is a, the spool that has kind of a basically a two-stage magnetic system that we have a mag force system that is a magnetic system that helps reduce, slow the spool down so you don't get backlashes and reduces backlashes. But now we also have a, a SV Boost. It's a system inside the spool that it's called an induct rotor that actually comes out when you go to cast and starts to even slow the spool down more, uh, which is what you need when you have centrifugal force. And then now this one has a two-stage, which comes out even closer to the uh, magnetic system, which slows it down even more, which will definitely give you less backlashes. You'll have overruns. And as you don't need the centrifugal force as much, it will retract and then will give you that long cast. So it has that system, which is new. We have our T-wing system, which if you go online and look at the reel, if you're not familiar with that T-wing system, is a wider aperture where the line comes out from the spool, and it's bigger in a T-shape. So because it's bigger, it allows the uh, line to come out with less resistance, which will give you a lot more distance. Wow. Uh, also, the spool is made out of a G1 Duralimino SV spool, which is a super hard material. So it's super high quality, and it's very durable. The air brake system, again, which helps slow down the spool and even has a, an audible click drag like you will on your spinning reels on this bait casting reel. This reel comes in a uh, 6.3, a 7.1, and 8.5 gear ratio. It weighs 6.7 ounces, and it has a drag max of 11 pounds and retails for three forty nine ninety nine. Well, I'll tell you what, Kurt, you had me at backlash reduction because I, you're talking to the, the backlash king here when it comes to bait casters. So I can completely understand, based on your description, why this won a, a best of new product award at ICAST. We've only got about a minute left. Let's talk about the Saltist MQ Saltwater Spinning Reel. This is, as described, a spinning reel for saltwater use. Tell us more. 
Okay, the Saltus MQ, the biggest feature on this reel is the one-piece monokey body, which is a one-piece frame. A one-piece frame will help you have less twisting and provide you know a stronger body for the reel so you have better alignment of the gears. It also has an oil we call mag seal oil on the main shaft, which prevents water from getting into the body. Also on the um, monokey body, it has a 360-degree seal instead of having three or so, four screws on the side where you will, you know, have have corrosion on it. It has a 360 seal that you screw on and prevents water getting into the hill for corrosion. It has a Zion air rotor to make it very uh, strong but lightweight. It has DigiGear, which is um, laser-cut gearing. It has an air bale, which is a hollow bale that makes it lighter weight. Oversized aluminum uh, hand handle and a waterproof tournament drag system. And it comes in sizes anywhere from a 2500 all the way up to a 20,000 size. So wow. uh, good for all applications in salt water and fresh water. And it starts at $299.99 and goes up to $389.99 uh, retail. How many bearings in this reel? Uh, this reel will have six ball bearings and one roller bearing in all models. Sounds fantastic. Both these literally sound like the reels of my dreams. And I guess the very last question I have is this. Are they on the market yet, the Saltus MQ Saltwater and the Zillion SVTW? The Zillion actually is on the market, and it has been selling like crazy, even at that price point. Uh, People that want high quality and are willing to pay for it, they're buying them like crazy. That came out in January. We haven't actually been able to keep them in stock. The Saltus MQ is a little harder. It just actually came out of the market, and we'll be seeing more and more come each month. So that one's a little harder to find because it just got released, but we will uh, have those in stock soon. All right. Well, keep your eyes out at your local sporting goods store or those big box sporting goods stores, too, for the Daiwa Zillion SVTW and the Saltus MQ Saltwater Spinning Reel. These two reels sound like they're going to really make your fishing a whole lot easier. Kurt, congratulations again, and thanks for sharing this with us today on America Outdoors Radio. I appreciate all the time, John. This portion of the show was brought to you by Henry Repeating Arms, which were not at ICAST because rifles are usually not featured at fishing trade shows. But Henry did win an award not too long ago, and it's a pretty cool one. Back in the fall of 2019, just before that pandemic hit, the Henry Repeating Arms Big Boy All-Weather Lever Action Rifle won the coolest Things Made in Wisconsin competition organized by Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce. This from a contestant pool of over 150 different products and companies. The Big Boy All-Weather Rifle, which is manufactured in Henry's Rice Lake, Wisconsin facility, went all the way through four rounds of popular votes before coming out on top in the final round where over 30,000 votes were cast. The rifle, available in 44 Magnum, 357 Magnum, and 45 Colt is a popular choice for hunters that need a firearm that is less susceptible to harsh weather conditions. If you want to check out the Big Boy All Weather Lever Action Rifle, just go to HenryUSA.com and find a dealer near you. And if you have any questions about this rifle, just call the award winning customer service staff at Henry Repeating Arms. They are happy to help you find one of these rugged, reliable, and accurate rifles with a lifetime satisfaction guarantee. Oh, and don't forget to ask for your free catalog and decals to that website again, henryusa.com. Turning briefly to the Olympics in Tokyo, congratulations are in order to Vincent Hancock and Lieutenant Amber English. They both won gold for the United States in skeet shooting. This was Hancock's third gold medal and Army Lieutenant Amber English's first way to represent the USA, Vincent and Amber, and congratulations. It's time to wrap things up, and I'd like to thank our guests for giving us another great program today. That includes Kurt Arakawa with Daiwa USA, who is also really stoked about the fact that on the Bassmaster Elite Series, the top five 
anglers were all Daiwa Pro staffers. That includes Seth Fighter, that Minnesota angler who was the angler of the year for Bassmaster, and Chris Johnston, the man I got to spend time with on a boat during the Bassmaster Classic on the official practice day. He came in in second place. Congratulations to both those anglers. I'd also like to thank Cody Robertson from Army Bass Anglers, Sarah Dorenzo with Wyoming Game and Fish, and Jennifer Doherty with the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. As always, it's our guests that make this show, and I hope you enjoyed hearing from them. If you didn't catch our whole program today, don't worry. You can catch it in a few days when we upload it as a podcast. Just look for America Outdoors Radio or America Outdoors outdoors radio podcast on your favorite digital platform and don't forget to like and follow our facebook page too because i've got a feeling we've got another giveaway coming up and i don't want you to miss it we've got to wrap up this show and put a bow on it but here's hoping you are blessed in the days ahead and i do hope you'll remember this it is your country and your outdoors so get out there and enjoy it The Dalles in Oregon is your base camp for fishing fun. Reel in big salmon, tangle with steelhead, bass, and walleye, or wrestle a monster sturgeon to the boat. After the day is done, you'll find a variety of lodging options around town. Need to resupply? We've got you covered with sporting goods stores plus great dining, breweries, wineries, and can't-miss attractions like the Gorge Discovery Center. Plan your fishing getaway today at explorethedalles.com. That's explorethedalles.com.